Rocky here has a big problem with the kettle. As you can see by this kettle door, he's kind of destroyed parts of it, and the Guardian has turned to using zip ties and carabiners to keep the kettle together. Now, for a lot of dogs, going into the kennel is two, uh, is two problems at once. First of all, I'm in the kennel and I'm restrained. Number two, my humans are leaving me. So I panic without them. So the first stage, what we wanna do is just teach the dog to go in the kennel and have a positive association. Now, do you have a word that you've been using to put him in the kennel? Kennel. I would use a different word because he has already developed a negative association with it by the way you've done it. I have a fire dog, my, I have a Dalmatian, so I call, him, I call his station because he's a fire dog, fire station. Mm -hmm. Do you have any thoughts, Chase, that we could call this? Um, how about Casa? Room? All right, room. Uh, what would you say, Castle? Casa. Casa, we could say Casa, is that okay? We can change it later, but we want to, don't want to change it too much. But sometimes if your dog has developed a negative uh, association with something, that command word can have negative baggage as well. Just watch your fingers so it goes, doesn't go in the front. So what I want to do is I'm just going to get him used to going in here. Because he doesn't like going to the kennel, I'm just going to put the first one right in front. I'm not saying casa yet. This is the same thing with, with the dog bed above. I'm just putting him so he's looking at it. Now I'm going to put one in just right in front so he doesn't have to walk in. He can, he can stick his head in and get one. That's good, not a lot of hesitation. I was expecting more hesitation. And you see he's lingering. And this is not too small, this is a fine size kennel for him. So for they say for human beings, and let's go ahead and film me real quick. Say for humans that when you get, I've never been, but if you go to jail, when you hear that door close, you know you're there for the night, it's serious. For dogs, when this door closes, that's what causes the dog to freak out because now I don't have free will anymore. The kennel is doing the work for me. So what we're going to do is toss the treat in there. We're not going to entice him. We're going to let him go get it on his own. And when we do, we're going to say the word now. I'm going to say casa. We say casa the second it touches his lips. And then he, we let him leave. So he's already lingering in there a little bit. Now I know he's probably done some of these things for you when you're at home by yourself. Casa. So when I do the next what I'm going to walk up after him and block him. Now for this one, um, come here buddy, I'm going to move your kennel, let's go right, let's do that. To give a little better camera angle, I'm going to move it over here a little bit. All right. So I want him to walk completely in the kennel, now what I do is I walk up and I'm blocking him. So he can't exit it. If he can't get me and make my head in the kennel, that's fine, just focus, this is the important part. So I'm going to wait for him to be stationary, then I'm going to take one step backwards and I'm gonna stay in place. I'm keeping my, my feet together, my hips pointed at him. Now, if he tries to come out, I'm gonna rush at him and I'm gonna use the first consequence, a hissing sound. This is my way of communicating, I want you to stay in the kennel. Now, I didn't do anything to punish him, that startled him a little bit, and again, we want a sudden movement, that's what moves him back in the kennel. Now, he's stationary, I'm gonna wait for him to look at me, and then I take a step backwards. One step only, left, right, and then keep your feet squared to point it at the kennel. Uh, now, initially, I don't want to move too far away because then he's going to just run out. What I'm going to do, and we're probably not going to be able to film this whole thing because it would be really long on YouTube and not very exciting. He can't leave the kennel until he LAYs. When he LAYs, that's his way of saying, I surrender, I understand that I cannot leave the kennel. The instant he does that, I'm going to immediately let him out of the kennel. If he SITs, I'm going to take a big step backwards to communicate. Because when he SITs, he's saying, I'm challenging you less. There we go. So I take a big step backwards simultaneously. So when he challenges less, I move myself further away from blocking the door. Now, as soon as he LAYs, I'm gonna take a knee and I'm gonna give him the C-O-M-E command. Now, if I tell him to S-I-T or L-A-Y and he does it, it's signifying a command. Oh, come. Come. That was way faster than I thought it would be. Uh, so now, after doing that, I always wanna have a positive one after where he can go in get it and leave without me blocking. So he feels like he has free will, there we go. So, I'm gonna... so basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, use this technique to help him feel more comfortable about going into the kennel. You see he's going in and out, feels very comfortable. In the next video, we're gonna talk about the instructions on how we can actually extrapolate this and help the dog learn to practice being in the kennel for longer and longer periods of time.